I'll call to order the uh, Thursday, January 25th, 2018 meeting of the Planning Board of the City of Northampton. Uh, every meeting begins with uh, public comment. This public comment period is reserved for items that are not on the agenda. So if you have an item on the agenda, we'll get to that eventually, but the public comment period in the beginning is for items that are not on the agenda. And do we have anyone that wishes? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Usually if you just do it from behind the podium, it's oh. fine. Okay. I didn't want to touch this computer. Uh, my name is Laurie Loisel and I live on Grant Avenue. And I just wanted to ask you to take up the issue of recreational marijuana. I understand that Northampton is taking a hands-off approach and sees it as a market, you know, it's a business, so um, whatever the state does. But local communities can have an influence on this and how it rolls out. And, um, and I feel like it's, it really is something that deserves some thought. Um, we regulate other commerce that has state regulations like tattoo parlors, septic, ta septic tanks, tobacco, and um, I think we should really think about how we want to regulate retail marijuana, specifically how many retail establishments we want in Northampton. There's a great website created by some people in California called Getting It Right From The Start. And there's several things I hope you will consider. Number one, I feel like there should be community discussion about this because I know that voters uh, approved it and I'm not saying it shouldn't be legal, but just because voters approved it doesn't mean they didn't want it to be regulated and, and doesn't mean they didn't have an opinion about how many um, pot shops we want in Northampton. It's a totally cash business. There's a lot of factors to think about and I think you know planning boards and planning departments should be thinking about unintended consequences of new businesses coming to town. And then the other thing is I understand that the uh, tax for um, medical marijuana is 2%, but it, you're allowed to tax 3%, and I would, I would hope that we could tax the maximum amount and that we could use it for prevention efforts because uh, just like alcohol and other drugs, marijuana is detrimental to the developing brain, and I think if we're going to be having this new substance in our midst um, that we really need to think about access, that youth access, and how to prevent young people who have developing brains from getting it. Um, and I feel like we, sh you know, we learned a lot from how tobacco was marketed to youth, and it looks to me like the marijuana industry is is following in a similar path. I think it's a new business in town. It should be introduced with some careful thought, and I hope that somebody in the city takes leadership on it because it doesn't seem like anybody is. Thanks. Thank you very much. <coughs> yes, ma'am. Um, hi there. My name is Heather Warner, and I'm a resident of Northampton. I have um, teenage boys, and um, I'm also in the prevention field and public health field. And I'm here for the same reason as Lori. Um, what we're seeing is it, it looks like a lot of our neighboring towns, Amherst, East Hampton, who are both sort of, you know, marijuana friendly communities, um, you know, are really taking a close look at both the original bill, the uh, amendment, and now the CCC's re regulation of marijuana. And, um, you know, there's a lot to, to take in with these bills and regulations, and it's a lot for cities to take in, and it's also a lot for community residents to understand. And I think that a lot of people who voted for this bill, you know, did so for a lot of really, you know, good reasons, you know, um, social justice and equity, uh, you know, um, not wanting to see arrests and, you know, uh, all, all kinds of different reasons. Um, but. It is a controlled substance, and there are things that communities can do. And you know, and, and I think that there's a lot of um, new issues on the table since this regulation came out. I mean, some examples are that the original bill really said that communities needed to vote in social um, um, on-premise, you know, use. But the, the new regulation seems to imply that that's just an automatic and a given. And I know that that's going to get fleshed out more. Um, but, um, you know, I think that really understanding the implications of, of social consumption and, um, 
there's also this whole area in here about mixed use um, locations where you could have a yoga studio that's using oils, for example, but you, it also includes, you could have a clothing store that has a little, you know, chocolate case in the back or, um, you know, if it's not its primary, um, you know, income, if it's a percentage of its income, then it can be a mixed use place. And then it doesn't fall under any of the guidelines for being 21 plus around, there doesn't fall under the guidelines for delivery. There's also a really lax, um, there's a lot of actually strong regulations about how the products can be delivered, including video cameras in the back of the van or whatever, and a cell phone use, the entire delivery, which of course is not very feasible out here, um, you know, that's then monitored by the establishment and blah, 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 <laughs> two drivers, <laughs> it kind of goes on like that. But, um, but then it, the mixed use facilities don't fall under that regulation. So there's, there's a lot of sort of problems that, you know, hopefully will get ironed out. But again, it's like these are worth looking at and there's a lot of things that towns can do. You know, we can look at uh, an upper cap. How many is too many in Northampton? What does our tourist <coughs> industry bring? Is it, is, do we wanna be a pot destination or do we have like older tourists that bring in the bulk of our tourist money, Smith College parents or whomever, you know? So, and I'm a family person who moved here because the schools are good and because downtown is family friendly, although there's some debate about that. There's a lot of drugs being dealt downtown. So, you know, what, what I, I don't know that I would want my kids coming downtown. And it's like, this isn't the town I signed up for. So I think just hearing from the public really about what we want this to look like. It's not that we might all be opposed to having it happen, but we do want to have some say in what this is going to look like and how it's zoned. What are the hours? You know, because it's a cash only, what does that mean? We've heard from other um, states that parking is a really big issue in the beginning especially, um, you know, and that public consumption, you know, just it, it, so I just think <coughs> that we as a town need to take um, all of these things under consideration. You know, Amherst has been proactive. They have a cap of eight. East Hampton, I think, is looking at 12. Um, you know, Amherst added buffer areas to the ones that are included in the state's law to increase, you know, and not have it be around certain other kinds of places. Do we want it around faith communities? Do we want it around treatment centers? Where do we not want to have these, you know, appear? And we can decide that. So um, I just encourage everyone to take a look at these, to um, increase, you know, public input, and um, thanks. <laughs> Thank you. I forgot to give some, can I give you some literature? Sure, okay. just leave it. And I actually have okay. one, too. <laughs> and the Amherst website actually has a lot of materials on it, too. Thank you. I'll now call open the hearing for site plan for four unit SRO with program space shared driveway by Jones Witsit Architects at 93 Locust Street, Northampton map ID 23B-30. <coughs> Is there a presentation? Uh, we have a PDF of the drawings. Okay. Uh, good evening, I'm Henry Albin with Jones Witsit Architects. Uh, I'm here to discuss the uh, project at the uh, intersection of Locust Street and Hatfield Street. Uh, this is phase two of the uh, housing development project. Phase one is currently underway and is using an existing building that already has a permit to convert into two two-bedroom apartments. Uh, that is the site that is currently on uh, Hatfield Street. Uh, we are looking to develop the uh, Locust Street site with a new building that includes office space on the first floor and four efficiency apartments in the back. Is the, the current project the one directly to the west? Uh, directly to the west. Mm -hmm. West, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's the southernmost. It's the one on. On the corner? Not on the corner, uh, on Locust Street. Yeah, where's the existing, the phase one? Oh, the phase one is, it's an L-shaped lot. Uh, it's two adjoining lots that are L-shaped, so it's actually uh, one back from the corner on Got it. Okay. <coughs> um, so this is just the site plan. Uh, this is the new building that will, that will be on the uh, Locust Street lot. 
uh, access this for cars will be from the Hatfield Street lot. Uh, at a previous um, town meeting, I mean, uh, it was discussed that it, that was the preference was that to not use the existing uh, curb cut, and so we will intend to uh, get rid of the existing curb cut on the Locust Street and have traffic solely come in through Hatfield with a small parking lot and at the adjoining at the location where the two sites adjoin, um, which is currently occupied by two garages that we intend to demolish as part of this project. Uh, the site is only 60 feet wide, uh, so our building has attempted to minimize the uh, amount that it encroaches on setbacks to either side. And, uh, currently, there are 15 foot setbacks to either side of the project uh, due to simply the width of the building. Um, we do have a side access uh, for the residential units, um, but we are planning on putting plantings to either side of the uh, side lots to mitigate uh, the uh, the site sight line uh, site setback issue. Um, Uh, the stormwater system is being designed uh, for a 100-year flood, so up to and including a 100-year flood, it would not uh, use the city drainage. Um, above a 100-year flood, we, do, we are requesting a connection to the Hatfield uh, line uh, for drainage pur purposes if we go above and beyond a 100-year flood. Um, but otherwise, all the uh, stormwater will be uh, taken care of on site. I think that's questions from the board. Uh, just a question regarding the <coughs> on the staff's comments regarding the traffic mitigation and the proposed deal, and can you walk us through that? Sure. So. <coughs> Um, the zoning requires that every um, project address its own incremental increase in traffic generation to a site. Um, so this, um, this is not a standard residential development in that um, uh, clients uh, typically don't have the same number of vehicles as a, as a four family or a single family home would. However, there's office use, um, you know, support staff that come to the um, property, which is um, why they're building a little parking area there. Uh, so the, tra so staff recommended and sort of discussed with the applicant, instead of using a, you know, four unit um, um, straight multifamily calculation, which would be uh, basically one, um, trip per unit, uh, peak hour trip per unit, um, that um, a similar formula that was utilized for the uh, Bridge Street um, low income or affordable housing project there be used, which is um, a ratio of 0 0.6 um, trips per, um, per unit um, to account for the fact that we, you have fewer, um, less car ownership and um, use of the site, yet there still would be an increase in trips generated by the use. So using that calculation, um, um, uh, based on the formula and the zoning, um, it comes out to a total mitigation or payment in lieu of um, $2,400. The applicant um, was intrigued by this comparable kind of arrangement that you all approved for the Bridge Street project about um, maybe using that money to buy bike share memberships as a way to offset um, that traffic generation. So um, they would ask that um, you all consider that as a means of um, 
providing that mitigation. So, you know, it's not clear yet what the cost of the membership is, but you, if you agree on the value, then, you know, we would massage that depending on what the ultimate um, bike share numbers come out to be. And then they can manage that as well since they're, they're, they're going to be owning the property and all the managing all the tenants on site. So it would be easy enough for them to track that, I think. What's the zoning on this property? It's urban residential B. And, uh, and um, John had asked the question too about uh, why phase one wasn't part of the project or why the board didn't see that. It's an existing structure. The use is allowed by right. There were no changes to the site or the building. Um, for that piece of it, so that in and of itself didn't trigger any kind of additional reviews by the planning board. It's just this new construction plus the new parking layout is what um, triggered site plan approval. Mm -hmm. The use itself is allowed by right. And the use for phase two is the same as for phase one? Yes, it's, it's still a real residential use. But it's multi. If, as if it were multifamily residential use. Right. So it's a different kind. Be, the reason it's exempt from um, the provisions of zoning under the Dover um, Amendment or Dover Act because um, educational uses are considered exempt. So we we categorize this type of program that has on-site um, facilities and sort of um, educational program for people who are living in the in the homes. Um, fall under that exemption. Um, so that's, so normally someone coming in just um, doing affordable housing that's, um, uh, even if it's a nonprofit, if it doesn't have that educational component, then it would only be allowed either through um, a comp permit or if the zoning allowed multifamily. Okay. This, you were talking about putting up um, vegetation as a, uh, presumably visual, perhaps sight and sound barrier along which side of that um, of that structure? Uh, both sides. So both, both sides. So to, uh, along she the she property that. lines to the tenant to the houses on either adjacent side and, of and the uh, Locust Street property. What's going to go? What What is that going to consist of? That is still to be determined exactly what that vegetation is. Um, we are looking at trees and uh, shrubbery to help with that sight line. So uh, again, the purpose of the vegetation is to give more privacy to the residential or what is that? Uh, it's because we, we cannot achieve the 20 foot minimum setback that would typically be required on a side lot line with a side entrance um, because the site <coughs> is so narrow. So we are doing that to help alleviate that issue on either side. So that's really going to require something with some height to yeah. it so that you've got some sound and sight barrier between them. Yes. Yeah. Um, yes, they, they, they would not be three foot high. Mm -hmm. three foot. I don't see a, is there, is there a plan here for the landscape L101 uh, on the bigger plan? New structure. And there's a fence. Is there not a fence on that side, only on the east side? There's a fence on the east side. There's the adjacent property on the west side has a lot of dense vegetation right along that property line, but there's not currently a fence there. So as a condition, can we leave it up to them what the plantings will be, but we condition the height? Um, do you have some recommendation along that line? Yeah, I thought it was spelled out in the revised plan, but um, maybe not. Um, uh, oh. Any schedule at the bottom, I mean, it says, you know, three gallon, I don't know how Oh, right, Jeff's right. here. I don't know how tall a three-gallon. Depends. Dogwood <laughs> is. Yeah. 
Um, so, well, there, there are a couple things. First of all, there is a the 15 foot setback is the standard setback. The requirement for a 20 foot side setback is if there is um, if the, the units are oriented to the side. And so, I'm not I I don't. Uh, there is no entrance on the rear. There, there is an entrance on the side. So it comes in under that. Cor it's in the back corner there. Uh, that little alcove that's about halfway up the building on the east side, with the angled wall. That's the entrance into the apartment section. But isn't there an entrance at the rear too? No. Uh, there's entrance to storage underneath the stair and to an accessible apartment. Other side, I think the west side is not really um, a setback issue. The, the east side, it's at an angle. Um, it's really up to, um, I think, yes, they're offering to put um, shrubs there and a fence. So the fence is, um, you know, basically the, what the zoning says is if there are, if the entrances are oriented to the side, then the setback should be a slightly bigger to 20 feet unless the planning board finds that there's an alternative means to provide that same kind of privacy protection to the abutting side. So um, they have both a fence and shrubbery inside the fence. So um, given that angle of the door, it's not exactly um, the same type of um, side orientation and entrance and access that was of con that was trying to be addressed in the zoning right um so i think that um in any rate you would decide whether you think this is a an appropriate um, buffer on the side but the another aspect of this is it's not truly directly at a i mean this isn't the backyard of this new structure um oriented towards the backyard of a you know the abutting structure so um I, so then you all would determine whether it, the height is an issue upon planting for those shrubs or if the combination of shrubs and the fence are enough um for that side it's a six foot fence and the shrubs are on the inside of the fence right I mean, isn't right. The fence the yeah right it solves the problem on that side, but it, this is going to be rather intensely used, so I am wondering about the other side as well. I mean, it isn't a question of how far from the house. It's just a question of active, right. lots of active people in there you know, to a greater extent than one might have anticipated. Yeah. Um, so you absolutely have the ability to, st to dictate, you know, the height upon planting. You could say five, seven feet, even if the shrubs they have selected don't come at that height. I mean, this, um, you know, these aren't really, these are really low growing. Yeah. They're not really meant to be, um, you know, a site, a screening. Any kind of a screen, yeah. I so um, absolutely, if you think it's more appropriate to have a screening, um, then you could indicate, you know, evergreen shrubs of X height along the western property mm -hmm. boundary. Mm -hmm. that um, for the, this building, this building only has four residents, uh, so it doesn't have. A but you're part of a, of a, the, the bunch other, of people. Uh, the other building has also four residents. Right. So a total of eight residents between the two projects, and there isn't. We aren't doing anything in, with public use on the uh, west side of the building, so there's no. The pathway is no access back there. It's actually uh, that's where our uh, stormwater reten retention is is on that side of the building. Um, so there isn't going to be very much activity to the west side of this property. Is that why there is no fence there? That is one of the reasons. Yes. Um, we are certainly amenable to putting a fence there if that is what is. Uh, best for the current owners of that property. So we'll be talking to them soon. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't know that it necessarily needs a fence. I just don't have a sense it's, those are sweet ferns along that side and how- That's how, how not gonna do a whole lot. Mm -hmm. And the dogwood isn't either, is it? 
no. just a shrub. It's right. not a tree. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so that's something to, to right. think about. Yep. Any other questions on the board before I open it for public comment? Just another follow-up on a staff comment about lighting, um, about perimeter lighting or spillover to the, there's no uh, photometric we plan. do have a, I, I'm, a I'm sorry that there wasn't a photometric included. We have had a photometric done. Um, we have a minor amount of spillover at the back of the parking lot of 0.1 foot candles onto the adjacent property, um, which we're currently, we're, but otherwise there's no spillover and we're still, we're still tweaking the photometrics for the site. And do you know, just again, based on the, I don't know if, if they, is that can see in the staff comments? Um, yes, I sent, um, so I had originally there, I think there was an updated photometric or spec sheet sent as the second part of the packet. Um, so they did see those comments. Um, I'm not sure, one question I had actually about the photometric assumption was, does it take into account the fence? Because I think they're still, you're still proposing bollards, right? You're, there's nothing Yes, we are proposing bollards. So I'm not sure if really there would be spillover if you have a fence at right. the back. Right. So I'm not sure, the, maybe the lighting, um, the person who did the lighting plan didn't really account for the fence. Right. I don't know. And there's just a question on the temperature too. Yeah. The color temperature, I don't know if you they, know. They returned the plan saying that they, they're they gonna use that, but I still think it would make sense to put it in the, as a condition so that it's Yeah, we clear. will make sure that we have, uh, provide the appropriate temperature mm -hmm. for the Okay, uh, we'll hear from the public on this project. Yes, ma'am. I have a question about the lighting. Uh, you have to come up to the podium. Oh. <coughs> and please identify yourself. Yeah, I got it. Go ahead. I had a question about the lighting. Is it going to be? Uh, mo motion sensors or is it going to be constant lighting and if you could identify yourself oh i'm rose clark okay and um, i'm um the mother of the owner and of the uh, property on 97 and your and your address my address or is um five lily pond lane okay. goshen got it okay so you're concerned about the lighting and whether it's going to be motion censored or Yeah, not. or it's going to be lit constantly. Would the applicant like to address that? So hi, my name is Phil Ringwood. I'm the executive director for Dial Self Youth and Community Services, the owner for the project. So um, uh, we had not yet decided whether that was going to be a motion sensor or continuous. Um, in some of our other projects, we've used timers to control when the lights are on and off, and that was something we were planning on um, having additional conversations on to figure out what made the most sense for the site and the surrounding area. So we're we're open to suggestions on that. What are the neighbors want? Yeah. Um, the uh, the um, neighbor to the north of the, the site didn't seem to have an opinion either way. They had motion sensors on the house that's in existence now and haven't had any problems with that. I um, have not yet gotten the opinion from the neighbor on the east and we have not yet gotten the opinion on that. She's right there. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, or Christine, so had a chance to, to check on um, what makes the most sense and if we want to have certain ones on a on, <coughs> on motion or, or certain ones, you know, on timer and what that timer could be, but we're, we're very, um, we're, we're able to make those decisions um, in a way that makes, uh, that works for every, everyone, so. And, and I had questions about the, um, the fences, uh, you were talking about fences and bushes, and I, I understand that some are there already. Did you, is that so, part? On the, like so on the western side, so between 97 Locust and 93 Locust, there, there's um, some pretty heavy vegetation there right now, which makes it very hard to actually see through from the adjacent lot into that property. 
um, which is also one of the reasons, uh, in addition to l less traffic in that side of the building, where we didn't originally spec a fence. And uh, you know, I, I was talking with Rosemary before the meeting, and all, um, you know, again, you know, if that seems like that a fence there would be beneficial, it's certainly something we'd be happy to accommodate in the plans. Mm -hmm. That I answered that question. That's it. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Ma'am, if I could just clarify, I think we also received a letter. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and were you going to share that? Would you? Oh, um, I can read it. I, 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 I received I it. I mean, some copies. Got yeah, it. everyone received. I just want to let you know that everyone did receive it. Everyone so, so did we, receive yeah, it. So we yeah. got yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I don't think we need to read it, but I, no. I, wanted, I wanted to make sure because I knew that was mentioned in the in the uh, the letter itself. So okay. Yeah. So everyone received it prior to the everyone meeting and had a chance uh -huh. to look at. It. Uh, that was my understanding. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Other comments from the public on this project? Can I ask a question on the lighting? Is sure. was the intent for the lighting? whether it's motion or timer to uh, turn off at a certain time or, you know, usually we regulate after, this, right. is, this is weird because it's office and residential, but typically on an, a commercial building, the lights are turned off an hour after close of business or something like that. And so. Uh, uh, as Phil mentioned, we haven't fully discussed uh, the timing of the lights at the, yet. Um, it's certainly something that we will be discussing. Um, I think the lights. I can just jump into yeah. So uh, I think we might be looking at different parts of the lighting system yeah. as far in terms of the lights that are on like the Locust Street side that are more in line with the office and program space versus the the, the lights that are in the more residential air section yeah. of of the property, um, providing some additional um, security for the tenants. And just like, clarify, oh, go ahead. sorry. Um, so if it isn't, if there isn't. Um, if those details aren't worked out and we're not conditioning them or approving the plan with those specific details, does it mean that we've, we've lost the opportunity to do that? Or okay, yeah. so I mean, if yeah. you think it's important, do it now in a condition. Yeah. And they, it sounds like they would be amenable for um, you know obtaining that direction. Mm -hmm. But um, I think it makes sense for you know certainly. Parking lot lights probably don't need to be on all night long, um, and res you know most houses have um, lights just at the door, so um, you might want to think about those kinds of things. Going back to, to to Mark's comment, I mean, given this area, I mean, there is a commercial strip just really in the next block, and it would be governed by the you know the normal rules we have about an hour after closing and all, and all that. Would not this be governed by the same? Well, this is a residential district, and it's technically a residential use. Um, so there aren't, and I'll say, too, with the commercial districts, there's not a standard for every single commercial right. use. With it. It's, all, it's typically only happens if um, the uh, project is coming into the board for uh, approval then you might apply a condition for that so it's not across uniform across the board as to how lighting is dealt um, on a com at a commercial level so now we're going to test this question okay. <laughs> if we if we left it unmentioned in our whatever mm -hmm. we end up doing it would then be just governed by normal residential conditions in that area Right, but there's which, no standard. Which there aren't right, which there, yeah. right. People can leave their lights on all night right. if they right. chose. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what I would. Yeah. Right. I would just you know, right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. That could parking lot quick. lights are the least residential components. Right. I think we need to include whatever it's decided, and if they haven't decided it yet, then it needs to hold until it's decided, so we can include it. But maybe they can work that out now and. Or you can just decide what you think is appropriate given the location. Right. And if that doesn't work, they can always, you know, if they go through the details and they decide that doesn't work, they can always come back for a request for And so that would be the same for the landscaping between the one right. and the west. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we should do that too. Yeah. So it sounds like there may be still some more discussion <coughs> about a renewal date and stuff, so maybe we put something in, right. and then if it needs to change, it comes back to yeah. us. Mm -hmm. So the thing is that he would work with the neighbors and then come out with something that's what it is I mean. well I, I think what I think what 
Tess is suggesting is that we put something in and say this is what we expect and if something other than that works out then they need to come back and say well it's not what you asked for but it's what is amenable to the neighbors if they want something other than so I, I think what I think what we're saying is we need to put something in just yeah, understand kind that. of as a, a marker mm -hmm. right. if something else gets worked out they can come back and say well we didn't do that but we did this and everyone agrees to it so yeah. I, I think we want to put something in yeah. kind of as a, a, a baseline about the lady Yes, you're right. right. Yeah, she right. has some understand or yeah. ways to discuss that. Other questions from the board? Anyone else in the public? Okay. I just, uh, I don't remember if I read an email. There is some concern about the traffic and how many people across the street often. I don't remember. No, it, no. I don't think that was the. No. Yeah, that wasn't. It was update. just about lighting and privacy. Yeah, that seemed to be the primary. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'll entertain. Move to close public comment. Second. All in favor? Yep. Comments from the board. Seems like we have mostly. Privacy issue. Right. Right. No, you guys can sit and have a seat. Sorry. <laughs> so it seems like we have um, either in the lighting or the plan kind of privacy type issues. Yeah, that, so that the, we, the, the, the plantings, it seems that the applicant is uh, agreeable to a fence if, if the abutters want it or certainly the planting along that line. It is, there is some, some growth on that right. side. Um, but that growth isn't theirs and who knows what happens in the future and so forth so something I think should be done and I don't know if the fern planting is I think it's some kind of evergreen planting that's high enough to or that can become high enough to be uh, a, a sound and visual barrier ought to be included in that because I think anything that's a fern is going to die back in the winter time probably fern just because there's Depending on the time of day, there's not a lot of light there. Right. Um, I was I was actually wondering whether we, whether we would go to having it have the fence match the other side. I mean, if it's good, it's good enough for one side. I mean, I understand the orientation of the building, but um, it is a pretty tight area. Whether we would want to go ahead and go uh, and, and essentially have it match on, on both sides. Mm -hmm. um, I think the I'm just going to pull out the. Um, it was in the secondary plan, more detail on the um, stormwater, um, the garden, the sway out on that side. Um, it, may be, it may be that the appropriate um, treatment would be just one or the other, given that there may not be enough right. Um, right. depth yes. right. along that property right. line. So, um, I mean, there is maybe a... Uh, it's actually maybe about five feet, I think, from the edge of the, the top of the swale to the property line. So I think it might be tricky to fit yeah, both evergreen oh. tree or shrub and a fence. Oh, yes, I agree. Mm -hmm. But I just don't understand. I mean, if they're putting the fence in, why would we Why do we care what this is? Well, not on that side. Not on this, there's uh, no fence on the this top. Side. Yeah, I'd then just put a fence in and yeah. be done with it. Yeah, I think that's. <laughs> seems like a no brainer. Fence. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> Neighbors are better with fences. <laughs> uh, so assuming we went with the fence, uh, the other issue was the lights, and I and I propose, you know, on the on the residential side to let them work it out with something that's they're only going to do something that I can't see them turning you know the lights on and leaving them on all night um, for their own residents. And so maybe maybe the parking lot lights yeah. um, have those turn off at a certain time or be on a timer. Yeah, I mean, you, I would think, as I said, those are the least residential. Right. right. Uh, um, so yeah, the parking lots lights off at nine, and everything else they'll just it's assumed they'll work with the the abutters in good faith. And we're 
best case scenario that that doesn't happen? Like if we don't have something something else defined on the for the rest of it? Do they? Just yes, I don't, don't know how do you, yeah. yeah. I don't know what you, what you would say. Yeah. When, I'm not sure what you mean when you say the rest of it. Like lighting out away from the parking area. Oh, I see what you, okay, yeah. okay. And I, I guess on the plan itself, I'm trying to just find exactly how many light fixtures were proposed on that along that yeah, side not. of the road. I, I guess on that side, I mean, then you're going to the residential side. That, that's yeah. I mean, if I resident. if I have a house, I want to leave my lights on all the time. Yeah. Right. So I so I, I mean I don't want, I don't want to swing the other way too far either. I, I think you know I think Mark makes yeah. a good point about the the least residential part is the parking lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess I get a little more concerned about. But the parking lot is just that's a bollard behind a fence anyway. Right. Already. Right. So right. It's already yeah. not necessarily the that most. Right. Right. I mean, we we would say. <clears throat> we could say around the house or structure, um, you know, could be on a timer to say nine o'clock, and the parking lots like go, go off, and then it's on motion sensor after that. So if somebody comes in at night, they're going to the back door, light yep. pops on, yep. but it's not doesn't stay on all the time. Right. They want to come back and make a tweak to that. Yeah. At least that's like something yeah. right. concrete right. that right. we say. Okay, did you write it down? You so. wrote it down. <laughs> yeah, this is yours if you're writing it down. <laughs> you wrote it down. Go on. So I just want. Our. <laughs> I, I hesitate. I just want to make sure we're not creating a restriction and, and kind of like that would they be the only ones restricted to this and the rest of the neighborhood doesn't have right, to. Right, I mean, yeah, right. I mean, I, I want to make sure we don't, you know, we don't go either way that, well, oh, we're going to, yeah. I know we're trying to accommodate those in the neighborhood, but but it is something that goes in the neighborhood. Right. I mean, either way. But it isn't a single family residence. It just isn't. But it, yeah. No, but those but in the neighborhood could leave their light post on if yeah, they wanted to. They all could. Night. Right, mm -hmm. right. Mm. Is this really, I mean, it doesn't seem like it's something that's, I mean, if you have a development, why would you want to leave the lights on all the time? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, it's that one of the things where we're trying to, yeah, you know, I, I don't like think they're going to burn money away. They're too. not wanting to run up their electric <laughs> heads, I don't think, but. So, <laughs> but but it's but also as we said at the beginning, in yeah. in the absence of anything, yeah. you know, yeah. that we could be creating a future problem that you know maybe yeah. we could try to avoid. Right. But, um, if, but if you walk that through, um, I guess I'm going the other way to your last point. If if we don't, if we just say on the commercial side of it, parking lot lights off at nine and leave it the rest up to them, and they decide to leave their front light on all night, and it drives the neighbors crazy. I've got people on my street that leave the yeah, light on all yeah, night right. and I have to pull the shade down because it comes right in that <laughs> drives me crazy but that's, that's, that's what it is right. so that's okay. so that's a good point yeah you know, and and um, so if the neighbors can then I guess the in it they should be able to too yeah. that doesn't mean they will but right. so there I mean basically at the front and then the side entrance that's where the <clears> lights are on the building yeah and then, and that's, so that's only on the eastern side of the property. So there's, t basically at the entrances right. are the lights under that porch. <clears throat> right. um, and then the parking lot would be sort of the two lights, one right behind the structure and then one at the back fence. So those, if those get turned off at nine, um, then yeah. the uh, only other lights are really at those entrances. Right, right. okay. So even the, the parking lot lights, they're bollard so you can't see them, but if they're on late, you have that glow. Right. Right. That's annoying. So that goes away at nine, and everything yeah. else is. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay. Circle, there you go. There you go. Okay. Okay. There you go. All right. Okay. Tess, you're writing this down. I'm writing it down. Okay. <laughs> okay. And so then the other, only other thing is the traffic mitigation. So Hi. basically, we would just agree on the dollar value and let them work it out as far as the bike share. How, how yeah, I mean the way I yeah. suggested it would be so. Uh, well, there's two. One is DPW also asked because they have a stormwater system that a stormwater maintenance agreement be yep. um, approved by the city and recorded prior to issuance of a building permit. 
Um, the other piece of it is prior to issuance of the CO that um, they'll show how they're meeting their traffic mitigation requirements of up to $2,400. So we can work that at a staff level, but they just need to show that at the CO, they've got a mechanism to do that. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, and so then I also have um, the lighting not to exceed yep. 3,000 K. Fence um, should be installed on the western lot line and parking lot lights off at nine. Yep. Um, can I say something or raise something? Sure. Traffic mitigation wise. And, and this came up, I think, when we were talking about Bridge Street a little bit too and the, and the bike share and the, the difference between mitigating by providing individual people, individual residents, memberships versus something that is like attached to the site. So I don't know if it's feasible or they can think about it, but in terms of the, the entire Pioneer Valley bike share system, you know, the system is as good as where the, the locations are. So is there a scenario where that traffic mitigation money is used to actually create a, a stop, you know, like a bike share <coughs> station that, and that money is used to maintain a station there so that the people who are, whomever those people are, you know, if these are gonna be shorter term residents or something that yeah. it's the site that's benefiting from being a bike share location as opposed to people having memberships. So, um, <laughs> well, there's a station across the street at Cooley Dickinson. So, um, forget everything I said. <laughs> <laughs> I take it all back. Quiet. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Terrific. But it was a good idea. Like I said, I mean, just the idea of kind of having the traffic mitigation, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. if yes. it's bike share related, right. related to the site itself. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, glad to entertain. <laughs> uh, motion to approve site plan for a four unit SRO at 93 Locust Street, Northampton Map ID 23B 30, with the following conditions um, that a stormwater maintenance agreement be recorded uh, at the registry, that the all lighting be a uh, temperature of 3000K, uh, that a fence be installed on that is the west side, right? West side of the property, that lighting. On the plan in the parking area, all lights go off at 9 p.m. And that prior to CEO, the applicant is able to show traffic mitigation um, through bike share or other means. Second. Second by Ann. All in favor? Thank you. I'm now call. 7.30 hearing a continuation of 40R smart growth permit for a 60,000 square foot, 53 unit, three story residential building by the city builder at Olander Drive, Northampton, map ID 31C 17. Um, I don't know whether the board wants to look at a site plan again for reference. Um, I think you know, last time we left, uh, the only thing that we were waiting for was a stormwater permit that was issued this afternoon. Um, so the conditions. We've reviewed the conditions that are amenable to um, those, those conditions. So I don't know if there's any other discussion or questions. I'm happy to put a site plan up or go through the plans if the board prefers. It's probably still on the desktop, Jeff. <laughs> it's probably still on the desktop. Yeah. There's no presentation because there's no public or no presentation needed. Right, because we were. Though, I, though I, I do see there was a note about more detail on the timing and assurances for open space dedication and trail construction, <coughs> as well as the details of how the project is meeting the stormwater requirements. Yeah. Did you, is there a oh, yeah. No. So, Carolyn, the permit has been issued? Uh, yes, this afternoon. Okay. This time, can you slide it on there so I can grab it? Or you can email it to me? Left off last time at the 
presentation you did a walkthrough um, on the civil side and the architecture side, and you you had a couple people uh, voice their support. They didn't have any objection. They didn't have any uh, major conditions. Have Jeff? Have you seen the the possible conditions from the staff? Uh, no, I'm aware of some of them, but I don't. Yeah, I haven't seen the. I don't think any of the issues changed since the last time I <coughs> sent it. I just sort of formulated the um, recommended conditions based on um, both what they were um, had suggested about, um, you know, mostly it was about the tree protection, which is standard conditions that they yeah. need to show that before mm -hmm. and it needs to be inspected before um, site work and then um, following uh, before CO make sure that all that tree replacement that was identified in the plan be um, completed. Um, and then it's still not entirely clear uh, precisely what the, what the phasing of that um, open space dedication and the trail connection will be, but I think that will start to gel <laughs> as time moves forward. So I think a condition that just says they need to show how they're gonna do that by the, mm -hmm. They presented that they're going to give it to the city. So I don't, I don't, I personally, um, from a um, staff perspective, don't have a problem with you all issuing it conditional upon them performing that. And short of being able to perform it exactly when they want their CO, they can set up some other means to do that that gives them a little bit more time. It, the staff comments talk about a performance guarantee. You mean a performance bond? Or just, well, it could just be any, so they could choose whatever it is. It could be a bond, it could be a letter of credit, it could be a covenant restriction or something. Mass okay. Development has done a couple of different, um, has, has um, opted um, a couple of different ways to address um, open space on, pre, on other parcels that have been acceptable to the board. So I don't want to predetermine what that would be. Right, okay. I want to leave it up to them to, to um, pitch something for the board to accept okay. at the time, if it's necessary. Right. It, it does say <clears throat> if the trail connector is not built, yep. why wouldn't it be built? I don't have any reason. To <laughs> <laughs> just trying to see if we're trying to solve a problem that doesn't exist. <laughs> so, I don't okay. know. But just in case. <laughs> there's, a question about, there's a question about coordinating with Echo House. Oh, okay. Our so, right. you know, one, it, you know, it hasn't been quite defined who's going to get there first to build Okay. It. All right. So it's only just making sure we're closing that, <laughs> tying right. that up in a nice little package so that it So it's really, the if the trail connector is not built at the time of completion of the project, <laughs> right. what's going to happen? Right. Because it's going right. to get built at some point. Right. right. Let's you make have sure. to show us how that's going to happen. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Does the city ever have? Does the city have a preference, or would the city rather that it be deeded, or just? Yes, but we can't dictate what they. So they've offered on various occasions to give that open space on the north, you know, on the yeah. outside to the city, and yeah. that's always been the intention. But okay. Yeah. But we have to just yeah say either or. Okay. <laughs> Is that done with an actual deed or or like an easement? No, if they give it to the city, it would be it's, a full okay. yeah. Simple um, ownership mm -hmm. transfer. Move to close public Second. All in favor? Any other questions, comments from the board? No, I think it's a great project. Yeah. In, in many ways. So I think it'll be nice for the campus and uh, a nice use of the space. I don't see any downside to it at all. Great. Someone like to make a motion? Motion to approve spark growth permit uh, for community builders at Olander Drive, Northampton map ID 31C-17 with the following conditions. Prior to any site work, applicant must install tree protection measures in accordance with ANSI 300. Uh, second, prior to issuance of CO, uh, all tree replacement must be completed prior to issuance of CO. If trail connector is not built, applicant must show through some performance guarantee or other mechanism how and when it will be completed. 
Prior to issuance of a CO, open space shall be permanently protected or deeded to the city. And prior to issuance of a CO, the applicant shall record a reciprocal easement or maintenance document for the first 75 feet of driveway north of the intersection of Olander and Ford Crossing in a form approved by the city for the shared driveway plan for access to the co-housing project to the east. Second. Second by Ann. All in favor? Mm. All opposed? Congratulations. Good to go. <laughs> Thank Thanks, you. Jeff. Thank you. Thank you. You can't possibly have anything else. <laughs> yeah, but A and R. Yeah, think. You think you have one? This is a really simple one. It's on the corner of Barrett Street and Jackson Street, and it's just a transfer of a sliver of land from one property to the other. Um, so it's not creating any new lots or anything. This way. So Jackson Street School is over here. This is, was that right? Yeah, something yeah. like that, Barry right. Street. Yeah, Jackson Street. So it's right this here. corner. Um, there, there's just a literally, like, what is it? Two feet, a ah. two foot sliver <laughs> on one side, giving it to this property where it looks like they're. Why are they doing yeah, that? what does that two feet give? Well, up? there's a. There's a patio here. My guess is there's somebody a built. Mm. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so, now that I've built on your property, right, you right, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this is one of those you beg for forgiveness and so right. ask yeah. for forgiveness. <laughs> <laughs> motion. motion. Oh. There it's by Tess. Yeah. Second by Ann. All in favor? Yep. All opposed? Thank you. Okay. Uh, Tess and Ann. Yeah. I have a question for the board. Yeah. Do we have to stay in session? Can we go out? Of, can we close? Or should, do we have to do this since we're all together? Well, if it's for the board, yeah. it's part of the meeting. I just had a question, and when this has come up a few times recently, um, uh, regarding public comment. Mm -hmm. um, and, and this may just be my own thing. You know, when we are in public, open for public comment, I feel like the public's here. <laughs> they get to keep talking. You know, I'm I'm resident or re reticent to cut them off. That means we sometimes have very long meetings <laughs> and we don't gain a whole lot of more information. My question is, I don't, I don't quite understand why if we close public comment, we can no longer ask factual questions of the applicant. Uh, that's the part, because if we could close public comment, I mean, often I think we're keeping it open so we don't lose our contact with the applicant. It's not necessarily because we're getting a bunch more information, it's because we're afraid that we won't then be able to get information we actually do want. I mean, or factual information. Your, your concern isn't so much with somebody who speaks long in the beginning, it's rather with somebody who comes back right, and says right. the same they're thing. They're here, you know, and, 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 and so I, I, think, yeah, and I think we often keep it open so we don't lose right. our access to the applicant, which I, I consider like factual information. Yeah. Right. But there's no distinction in the law made, right? Between the right, I think there's a concern about favoritism. Well, oh, well, you're still talking them, but you're not, you know. Right, right. So, I, so I, that's just, I don't know if there's anything to be done about that, but that's, you know, that's you the. Just put like a giant clock behind you? <laughs> <laughs> counting, <laughs> counting down. <laughs> City, City Council. What's your, your question City is. Um, could, could, why is it that if, we can. If you're asking it? factual questions why can't of we still, the applicant, why can't we still. Can you do that in a closed public after we've environment? Closed. Oh, right. No, because so the public hearing <clears throat> is for everybody to hear from the applicant and also a chance for the um, people in the public right. to respond and, and speak. And, um, and so that is, all of that is considered public hearing. And then you need to deliberate on everything that you've heard. If you're, it, but it, it, you can't limit your public hearing to just one side of the issue. So you may be thinking you're trying to gain factual information, uh, mm -hmm. but that right, but right. there may be people in the public who say, well, wait a second, my facts That's are not facts. Right, right, right. <laughs> so it's equal time in a yeah. sense. Okay. All right. I mean, and that, you know, and I guess that's the, the it's a public hearing. It's not public right. comment. It's a public hearing. Yeah. hearing and right. so everyone, while okay, that I mean, I, th I yeah. think thinking of it that way will help. But close public comment though. Are we allowed to reopen it? Like if we are like, oh shoot, we shouldn't have closed it. Can we? Are we, um, yeah, we need it's, it's it's tricky. I mean, technically, I think you could if it gets to be too long. I mean, 
then people might leave because they're saying, oh, public hearing's over. Mm, right, right. I'm going to leave. And mm. then you reopen oh, it. Oh, right. Yeah. Right. That Which, again, could be me. seen as giving favoritism. Mm. Right. right. Then that state. person wasn't notified that you right. were going to. Because it says the public hearing is now. And once you've closed right. it, then. Okay. It's also because we talk about it and they are learning from us, too. Right. So yeah. Right. Yeah. It's just, I, I think it's more about the communication with the applicant. And you know, and right. I think we often keep it open because right. we don't want to hamstring ourselves. Right. It's a ourselves. technical question or something. We want to yeah. have that availability. Right. And I guess I think again, I think of that as like factual information, but <coughs> still, it's a public hearing. Y right. Yes, but your facts and my facts right. may not, not be the same right. facts. But you know, the way that you could, if you're concerned about, you know, the if there are lots of people that have come for the hearing, and you've narrowed it down, and you just need to have points of clarification. Um, you can state that you know that you're not going to take any more public comment unless it's based on new information that hasn't oh. been presented right. um, so that it's not the same people getting up saying Starting from something scratch. in a different way but really the same thing yeah. um, then you have to begin have to negotiate with those people yeah. and that can have its own trickiness but, but i mean you have a lay person on the audience mm -hmm. and he or she has her own she needs to speak up she wants to right so yeah. right she, I, like i said if oh. someone's here i i am you know hesitant to not allow someone the opportunity to right. if they came they waited yeah, their I mean, turn and so i, I, I don't want to curtail public comment but i also want to make sure that we're you know we're trying to move ahead and, and but then again i don't want us to get a, cut ourselves off from information that we might need right. which i think is why i mean you I might say at the at the end of the you know we, we try to say if if you share somebody's opinion just right. get up and say, I, I, I agree with Mrs. Jones 100% and get your name on the record yeah. and, then, right. and then step yeah. aside. So maybe but then at the end of that process, you might say, uh, we're not going to close public comment, but, I, but we're going to start deliberations. And if we may have a question for either the applicant or somebody else, and we're looking for information, but that's not, we're not right. trying to open. We're not starting all of yeah. Right. Yeah. And okay. just give, that's good. That give might be everybody good. a little. At least hopefully let people say, hey, we're trying to do this in a structure. Right. Yeah. right. Okay. That's so, so let's talk about the, the previous meeting, right? The board meeting it was quite long, right? The one, which one? The one two the weeks ago? One, yeah, two weeks ago. Wasn't that long? I wasn't at was that Was it? Was it? Was no, it, was no, it was the one in December was very long, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was two, me it was yeah. two meetings yeah. ago. Yeah, I think it was two meetings ago that that was, that was really Three hours or something. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, but I think it has to be caught, you know, cautioned because right. When the elders, the public come here, they want to say something, and right. it should be right. Able and, and we don't want to curtail that. It's just yeah. trying to manage it so that everybody, you know, and we get out here at a reasonable hour and all those good things. And okay. Are we, um, we're not prohibited necessarily, or maybe we are, from like providing as a board, like providing sort of like like ten things to know before you show up at a planning board meeting. Like here's how public yeah, comment works. Right. Here's yeah. what you know, like. Like I remember, like when I first came on, uh, remember, like when I was talking, I was like, "Oh, let's make videos about like how to go to a public meeting." Like that was like the worst video ever. But like, yeah, there are just like a couple things that people might, because right. I think even sometimes people are throwing like, which microphone and like, how do I identify yeah. myself? Like, you know, so like, I mean, I'd be happy to like do something really I think, easy. I, that's I like, Mark, I think Mark makes a good point about you know, especially you know, we know when there's going to be you know, yes. when you walk in and the room is packed, <laughs> yeah. right. So, you know, Buckle up, and we're. Oh, and I think maybe it's like setting some of those parameters, like, hey, this would be helpful, right. you know. What, you know, would it be um, heavy-handed if, in a situation like this, where sometimes we know before we even get out of our car to walk up, or right. that the room's going to be full? Right. In an instance like this, you just have an eight and a half by eleven sitting on each seat that just says, Sorry, "Okay, cu a couple guidelines. Thank right. you for coming here. Here's the basics. Yeah. That's what city council does, right? Yeah. Like, when it's a big. Yeah. No? This is this is what's going to happen. Some this of is the how. Committees or something. Right. Yes, they did it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, again, I think you know. I think usually when we try and let people know, <laughs> you write that down. If you agree, okay. you did it. Like You've got a comment. Make it. If you just agree with that comment, don't you know? You don't have to reiterate. Just say you. I mean, so I, I maybe you know. Again, we can. I can just try and remember to remind people. Hey, mm -hmm. it's clear that we have a lot of people here. Lots of people want to make a point, but we don't need to make the same point over and over. Try and be respectful. And you know, I mean, and I you know. and I can make a video about it. <laughs> I would like to see that. I will, I'll fund that video. I, I'm not sure what that says about either one of you. This is a question. Is, is this, was this actually pertinent to us? Will this be pertinent to us? This 
Um, this the the mayor is going to introduce um, zoning language um, to the city council. Okay. Um, relative to that, so there are a lot of issues here that are outside land use issues. Um, they're more board of health or actually um, policy that's beyond not land use but political policy, like caps and things like that. Um, so you will see an right. ordinance um, coming. Mm -hmm. And we will see applicants wanting to build mm -hmm. start if it's a something. new If it's new That's what I was but our, yeah. our, our I mean, it will come across our radar screen yeah. at some point. Right, yeah. right. That's so. what you would be doing, is recommending to city council. Like, right, so you'll, that you'll that hold sense. a public hearing on the zoning changes for. Kidding, that was a joke. <laughs> Sam, can you confirm or deny that? Okay. What, uh, I don't know. So, on that note, motion I will entertain a motion to adjourn. I will be adjourned. And motion to mark, seconded. All in favor? Uh, thank you. Mm -hmm.